When it comes to Frank, you know, Mr. Seti Astro, I can't think of a person in a long time that has not improved my workflow as much as he has. And his update to statistical stretch is just another gift to all of us amateur astrophotographers that process inside of PixInsight. Now, of course, he's really heavily focused on his own program. I don't know how many updates he's made to all of his other stuff. I wish he would update everything in PixInsight because for me, I still do most of my processing inside of PixInsight. Sorry, Frank, um, but we're going to be doing more SAS Pro stuff because I think there's more stuff in the pipeline that will make things easier. Anyway, I'm Chad. This is the Easy Astro Images channel, and we are going to play with some photons today. So we're not going to cherry pick through data like I've seen other people doing when they're demonstrating certain type of stretching algorithms out there and all that kind of stuff. Like uh, we're just going to throw the whole gambit at you. So we'll do some RGB stuff and everything. And I am using statistical stretch two point whatever now for a lot of my processing. I wish it was could be integrated into Pi Magic now. That would be super awesome. Uh, Frank, uh, Dr. Christian, is there a way that we can get us a little statistical stretch tab in there somehow? That would be really great. I know there's conflicting views on that, but you know, come on, look us up. Anyway, channel members, appreciate all of you guys. If you want to do that, buy me a coffee, everything down below. Let's get to it. All right. SetiAstro.com. Download is a repository. Everybody knows how to do that stuff. So right here in the scripts, we go to the SETI Astro scripts and it is just statistical stretch, which by the way, his star stretch is amazing as well. So let's start off with a, uh, let's start off with just a basic dark nebula. So I, this is one shot color, C star data. This is what I've been working with. I uh, got one night on this. This is a, an LBN, uh, object that I've been collecting some data on. This is just the regular nuclear stretch. And we're just going to go right into SETI Astro Pro. And then we're going to work on this right now with the statistical stretch. And right off the bat, one thing that does annoy me, and it happens in SAS Pro 2, is I just want to fit the view right away. I don't want to zoom in and out. So I, you know, I try to do stuff like this to Hopefully, uh, show Frank the little things that I know that he will fix. And that is why he deserves his flowers is because there is not a time that I have not reached out to Frank that he has not reached out to me. So a lot of these videos, if I'm making suggestions, it's not to critique Frank. It's just because maybe sometimes he doesn't see it through people's eyes because he's busy, like debugging, like all day long. I don't know how the guy sleeps. So anyway, First thing I do, start the image and I just leave everything at default and I say preview, refresh, and it's basically just going to give me a preview. So, I mean, it looks freaking amazing right off the bat. Um, that's pretty much what I am looking for. You know, you could see the target median would seem a little bit high for some people, but it just works better with his maths. I mean, you can increase it a little bit, preview, refresh, you know. 35, whatever. I'm just going to take it uh, back to the 0.25 default. And then the, usually what I do right off the bat is just click on HDR compression. If I'm doing an RGB image, I will use the Luma. I will take the blend down to about 50. I'll click on normalize. I'll take my curves boost and take it to like 0.20 to start with. Preview refresh. That looks pretty freaking good to me right off the bat. Maybe we can go a little bit more on the curves. Let's go to 0.3. Oh, can't go up that high. 0 0.3. Preview refresh. And execute. And there we go. I mean, we are stretched and ready to start playing super clean we've got details that are coming out in front of everything i mean what else do you want out of a stretch you cannot get this out of 
Verilux. You can't get this out of mass. Like you have to do some work. Now, obviously, I would do this a little bit differently and probably take the stars out and stuff. You can see the star halos are going a little bit crazy. But luckily, he has another script inside here called Halo Be Gone, which can take care of that. And if you're inside a Pixel site, of course, you can do the blur exterminators and do that. All right, so let's get rid of that. Next one, Thor that we shot with the S50. Thor looking beautiful. Yep, you can do all kinds of awesome stuff with C stars. So don't let anybody ever fool you. Go back into script, SETI Astro. Let's go to the statistical stretch again. And what are we going to do? We're just going to hit preview and take a look at it real quick. Make it a little bit bigger. And I'm going to click on the HDR compression. I'm going to normalize it. And I'm going to put my curves boost up to 25. And we will preview refresh. And this one is not stretching as hard as I want to because I know there is a lot of background nebulosity in there, but it's not very well defined. So his math is obviously not picking up on it. We can try to do a little bit of Luma on it if we want to. Gave it a little bit of color boost. All good. We'll go ahead and hit execute. That's great. Now, what I would really do next is take this thing and the narrow band normalization. You know me. I always like to give you guys a little bit of a whatever. So hey, there's your different colors that you can roll with inside of narrow band normalization. By the way, Frank has just updated this inside of SETI Astro Suite Pro with Mike Cranfield and Bill Blanchin. Pretty much the main three four guys that have kept picks in sight rolling for the past four to five years. So, you know, like when you team get all them together, there's one more person that needs to be uh, a part of that team. Where are you at? Russell Croman? We need you brother. Jellyfish. Here we go. Let's do this again. Like I'm not doing easy stuff here. This is, Six to eight hours, Starfront data and all that kind of stuff rolling on a statistical stretch. And it's just handling it all like a champ. So once again, preview, take a look at that. And we're going to HDR it. We're going to Luma that. We're going to normalize it. Curves boost to about 25. Refresh. Zoom it back out. Yeah, the Luma's a little strong on that one because it just kind of is. So we can get rid of that. There we go. Execute. And, you know, rinse and repeat. Like, we're going to take this into narrowband normalization. We're going to play with the colors, all that kind of stuff. Oh, and by the way, you don't need to leave your stars in. You can stretch this stuff without the stars, too. I'm just trying to, like, show you how well it all works all together. Uh, by the way, this is uh, one that I worked on and I'm pretty proud of it. You can see that there's a lot of detail and stuff in the background that it picked up and, you know, Blur Exterminator made up some all made up all that kind of stuff, but I think it's pretty cool. Tadpole, same thing. Lots of time on this. We got the little tadpoles in there. Love the way this is looking. This came out really nice and clean. So let's just go ahead and give this one a shot and go ahead and give it the basic preview right there and i mean that looks pretty freaking good right off the bat hdr this baby normalize it curves boost 25 preview refresh try some luma it's probably going to do the same thing as it did before Eh, not too bad we'll take that one we'll execute it done make it a little bit bigger for you yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. Let's just try this trick again one more time just because it's totally awesome. Yep, there's your SHO. Look at that. All that nice color deviation that we got in there. We could just sit here and play with this all day long. There's nothing that this thing can't do. And uh, RGB images. RGB images are something that the C-Star right now with its current sensor really struggles at. 
and it picks up a lot of color background and everything else. I've got a problem myself of trying to like overstretch to bring out those details. And then I do luminance layers and all kinds of stuff. And it just, uh, you know, it just doesn't work out right. So it is what it is. PV refresh. This is, uh, oh, what the hell is this? NGC, something like that. Yeah, see all that that's going on back there, all that like different coloring and stuff, the magentas and a little bit of greens. It's actually not too bad, though, with this. That's the good thing is that when I try to do this with moss or with something else, it exaggerates all of this magenta and green. And this stuff should be kind of like brown. And then when you go to desaturate it, it looks really bad. Uh, and this one, maybe we could try going down to like 0.20 and see if it just kind of like calms that stuff down a little bit. Doesn't look like it is. It's just kind of is what it is. Like uh, this is just sensor stuff. So this image here is going to take a little bit more work. Uh, we'll normalize it. We'll give it a little bit of a curves boost. See what that all looks like. And that looks pretty good. It did exaggerate those colors and stuff in the background a little bit more. Now, when you go to Luma on this, this is probably going to really make things a little bit wild. I mean, it's not horrible. It brightened up the blues a little bit. Hit execute. And, you know, this is an image that we could work on. Uh, you know, this is, these are tough images. Like even, I mean, this thing here has like, 30 some 40 some hours on it from Starfront and it's just really hard to again when you don't have like a clean RGB sensor you can see how smooth everything is with uh, noise exterminator and all that stuff so this is not a Frank problem this is a, a, C, a C star problem and that was pretty much it like I don't know how many more examples I need to give you. I'm not going to cherry pick and do the rosette and do like some big galaxy that covers the entire screen. Like these are tough images and statistical stretch is just one of the steps. You can stop there and then you can go into things that I showed you like narrow band normalization, or you can, you know, do something. I like doing this right here. We go into the tadpole here. Let's go into narrow band normalization and let's just finish this off just like real quick because I always like to give my viewers that stick along for the ride a little bit of something extra extra. So I want to do this in mode two because I just love this. I call this the sky story color palette because it's kind of what his like little color palette looks like and we can go into GHS and play with this a little bit. First thing I'm going to do in GHS is I'm going to like just give this a little bit of a saturation boost just to kind of just make it a little bit more poppy so I don't get crazy and all that kind of stuff because GHS will really, really hammer down. And then we'll go to the linear transfer. We'll kind of get rid of some of this like black dead space right here. I don't want to like completely nuke it. So we'll go to that right there and then we'll just click uh, somewhere here in the background, send that to SP and then we will just work up our stretch factor and then pull down that local intensity. So that way we're not blowing and everything out and we just kind of want everything, you know, to be a little bit more symmetrical and, you know, actually, I mean, I don't, now that I'm looking at it, like, I don't think that I made this any better. I think it actually looks worse. So let's back out of that. And you're going to learn that sometimes I like a little bit of the brightness and the contrast to my image. And that's just the way it is. And now you can finish this off with a little bit of noise exterminator, or you can use another script that I use constantly that I don't see a lot of people using, which is the create HDR image. I love it. Um, it can get a little bit heavy handed. I find that three layers, I turn up the saturation just a touch. I turn up the contrast just a touch and I just add a touch more of luminance and go ahead and hit the button and 
Here we go. So there is our finished image, all done, easily made, statistical stretch. We got tadpoles going on there. We got lots of good contrast. We've got structure going on even inside of the dark nebula as well. And I mean, it's just great. So hey, just hands off to Frank. Really appreciate everything that you've done for us in the community and look for some SAS Pro content. We'll talk to you guys later. Peace.